What is South Lake doing in terms of dealing with the shortage in the health and yeah. resource space? Yeah, so I mean, we have some particular shortages. We, we have shortages across them. We have some quite concerning shortages, for example, in our intensive care unit right now. And so you can't just close your intensive care unit. Uh, we have reduced the number of beds. Uh, we have a, a very intense program right now to recruit and train. And so we're sort of doing, if you will, almost like our own little co-op program where, you know, we, we, in addition, obviously, to trying to recruit staff that already are critical care trained, but those are few and far between, what we've done is invited nurses who work in other areas to say, you know, come on down, come join the team now, work alongside uh, some of our seasoned ICU nurses, get a sense of what it is that you'll be doing and then we'll put you through the training. And we believe that by doing that, we can achieve two things. One, we get an extra pair of hands in there to, to help to mitigate some of the, the existing specially trained shortages we have, but also we, we give people who may be going into training, which is a substantial investment for both them and us, their time and, and our dollars to really see what they're getting into and to get a sense of the team and that kind of thing. So we're doing that. We we put extra educational support in. Uh, we continue to kind of watch our bed base to see how we can modify staffing. Um, but it 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 maintains it it, it is a it is a day-to-day -day pressure uh, and it's and it's very variable. So you know, on one given day, uh, you may get a number of admits to your ICU uh, that you can't mitigate because they come in through the emergency department. And so, you know, we've relied on some of our good relationships with some of our other hospitals who uh, may have a shortage in a different area that we can help them with. So we've tried to, you know, we're bartering a little bit and, and working collectively. And, and I've also had some conversations with some of the local universities that train nurses, for example, to say, you know, how can we do some things differently and how can we, you know, use the lesson of the pandemic, which is let's not think about the barriers. Let's just try to get something done quickly, because I think that that has been one great thing about the pandemic is right. we've been able to innovate pretty quickly mm -hmm. because people had a sense of urgency and we're willing to relinquish some of the traditional rules that might have been in place. And if you had to think about maybe some of those reasons why people are rethinking their career in healthcare, because typically healthcare is a field that people find meaning in. They're drawn to it. So there is something deeper there. But then when you look at the other aspect of human resources, you know, staff want to feel valued. So are they not feeling valued or you know what what might be some of those issues? Yeah, we've, we have heard certainly in engagement surveys, and I don't think it's much different at, at some of, at most other organizations that they certainly are going through a period right now where, where they don't feel valued or as valued as they could be. I, I think to a degree the the duration of the pandemic has, has been a part of that. I think, you know, for example, in wave one, staff felt very valued and our experience surveys told us that but that was also a time when you know around the world we didn't realize how long this was going to be and so you know they were receiving all kinds of kudos uh you know posters everywhere recognizing them copious amounts of foods and good goodies and all kinds of things that came in and so you know, those were very tangible. Yes, they were small things, but there there were a lot of them. And now we've gone into this sort of, now we're in kind of the daily grind of this. Okay. And those things, of course, haven't continued because they were time limited. And in addition to that, you know, as I said, some of the, the, the policies like Bill 124 has been very difficult for them because you know, one of the most tangible things that 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 people connote with value is 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 money, mm -hmm. and so they feel that you know they haven't had any tangible rewards for some of the stress that they've gone under. What we've tried to do is obviously we've tried to continue recognition efforts, and we've tried to resolve any small issues that we can for staff. I can't resolve the dollars issue. The money issue, we, but we've tried to be responsive to 
you know, any other issues that they might have, for example, you know, small equipment or PPE or those kinds of things. I continue to have, I have a daily town hall. In fact, in a few hours, I'll go into our weekly, or sorry, weekly town hall. And, and that's one of the opportunities that staff have to just ask questions, get updates, stay involved. But it is a challenge right now. And I think it's something that we're all struggling with because to a degree, I think that some of the tools that we would like to have to truly provide that value, that value proposition for staff, we don't have them. But I also think right now that that it, it what I've been noticing is that for some stuff, it's been hard for them to actually articulate to us what feeling valued looks like. Right. Yeah. And when you refer to some of those tools that you wish you had, what are they? Well, I mean, things that, I mean, monetarily, it would be really great to be able to create retention bonuses, mm -hmm. for example, for some of our staff. We do have the option to offer hiring bonuses, but that's because uh, those people are not yet union members. So we're not bound by a collective agreement for that. And then thus we're not bound by Bill 124. Once people become, if they're in the system, then we're not off, able to offer them that type of compensation because it does not abide by the collective agreement. So that creates some challenges. I would love to be able to do that. You know, I'd love to be able to reward people with some time off and that kind of thing. That's just not possible now due to the, the, the shortage because all that happens is that if you give one person time off beyond what they're already getting for vacation, you're then creating a staffing challenge for others and putting them under stress. So, you know, it's a bit of a balancing act. When I was a nurse, really valued education opportunities as one of the things that, that really worked for me. Again, when you're in such a shortage, it's very difficult to do that. So it's a bit of a vicious cycle. You have to recruit first in order to sort of fill your holes and then you can really work on that recruitment or that retention. But if you don't work on retention, the holes continue to up so 